Astros are normally something that's supposed to be scared. <laughs> in fact, they're the opposite. They're usually the most bright and happy, sweet and kind pieces of media you can find in the world. But sometimes there are kid shows that are a little darker, ones that traumatize you. I remember back in elementary school around Halloween time, my teacher decided she would put something on for the class to watch. She had done this before, so we were all excited. I was excited. We all sat in rows on the colorful rug, crisscross mm -hmm. applesauce, everybody's knees touching. And she rolled out one of those old big TVs, the ones that gave you that fuzzy feeling when you touched them. I was stoked. I was excited to see SpongeBob or Shrek or whatever it could be. Mm -hmm. But when she turned on the TV, it wasn't Shrek or SpongeBob. It was Goosebumps. Some of y'all may have forgotten or may just- Just bitch. Okay. You don't see me commenting on you. When you goddamn peel that banana with your feet now, do I? No, nigga. Because I know that's what your culture be doing and shit like that. You don't see me commenting on that shit though, right? Right, nigga? Huh? You don't see me saying no shit like that, huh? No. Just be too right, like you when be. I tell y'all this show used to give me nightmares, I mean nightmares. So today, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be facing my fears and I'll be going over some of the episodes that were buried deep, deep in my subconscious with y'all. And in the end, I'll go over the episode that scared me the when most I say monk, I mean as a bald child. Nigga from, like, so Avatar. strap in. Starting with the one known as the scariest to the general public. And this when we follow these two girls who stumble across this novelty yes, shop in the middle of the night and straight off the jump, turn around and go home. Please. These two girls are Sabrina, aka the main character's best friend, and our main character, Carly Beth. What kind of name? In typical horror fashion, our main character is fascinated by the novelty shop and wants to go in. I mean, it has scary mask and an ominous man watching them. Who wouldn't want to go in? What's the creepiest show y'all ever seen or movie? Creepiest show or movie y'all ever seen? That's supposed to be PG. I ain't gonna lie, it ranges. It ranges like shit. I was not swinging in no trees with Devin last night, bro. <clears throat> Alright, buddy. That's just not what happened. Nightmare Before Christmas? I haven't seen Nightmare Before Christmas in a long ass time, bro. Who was the villain? Wait, wasn't the good dude on that bit before Christmas the nigga with the mask and shit? Or the nigga with that certain brown face? This nigga? Bro. <clears throat> that nigga was scary in the movie. I'm not gonna lie. You know what kind of creeped me out? Coraline, bro. Coraline kind of creeped me out like a motherfucker. I'm not gonna lie. The mom with the goddamn button eyes and shit. And all them scenes and shit like that. I don't know why. But that shit creeped me out like shit, bro. I don't know it's from the fact that it was like. The mom was over there trying to possess, like, the little girl to get in the button eyes and shit, bro. And I see all these niggas have button eyes. And it was attacking that little girl, trying to make her have them shits, too. That shit was weird as fuck. That shit was genuinely weird. Like, creepy as shit. That. Well. Um. I can't really think of nothing else. Like, for kids, specifically. Yeah, you could probably say that the house uh, movie. I forgot what I was called. Okay, buddy. The Scary House movie. Whatever that shit was called, my nigga. Y'all know who I'm talking about, though. The Eden House. Here we go. That one. That shit. That shit was kind of creepy. Um... That's all I can think of. For real, for real. I don't know. That's generally all I can think of. I wasn't scared of no cartoon ass movies though. Any show or any movie I've ever been scared of, bro? My fault. This, I'm like a moth to a flame right now eating this damn chicken. I'm sorry. It's good as fuck. But. 
I ain't gonna lie. Any show, any show or like movie I was scared of, bro, was always some like real shit, but it shouldn't even been that scary for real. Bro, I used to be terrified. Uh, oh, Robot Chicken. Yes, yes. Chat, I don't think y'all know. I don't think y'all know. Robot Chicken intro. Bro, this couldn't have just been me, bro. I don't care. This couldn't have just been me. I don't think y'all realize, bro. Y'all don't know how scary it is, my nigga, to wake up middle of the fucking night. All lights off, right? I'm talking all lights is off, everything all but your TV. The whole house dark. It's 4 or 5 in the morning, right? Everything off. You waking up from your sleep. And this is the first thing that you're seeing on your screen as it's dark, my nigga. Actually, y'all can't even see me. But you waking up, and this is the first shit you see. As you wake up. I'm laying down. Look at this. Look at this. I don't know what it was about this shit. I don't know what it was about this specific show, but waking up at 4 a.m. on fucking Adult Swim, bro, scared the fuck out of me, bro. Because they always knew what time they played the show at, bro. They always played it at this time, bro. And that shit pissed me off, bro. That scared me crazy when I was little. There was this other movie. I forgot what it was called, but it was like this ghost girl or some shit. Uh, Thriller. Thriller scared me too. The music video. I think that scared everybody though. This scared me too when I was watching it. Like this part, this part specifically. Like when I seen, when I first, when I seen that shit, that scared the fuck out of me for some reason. I don't know why. Now when I'm older, I'm looking at him like, oh. Okay. <clears throat> that shit scared me. It was the zombie. The zombie about to... Yeah, this part too scared the fuck out of me too. All of them coming by to grab her. I woke up out of a dream like that one time. Never again, bro. I was scared for my life, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Look up, look up a scene of the Nightmare Before Christmas villain. Children never get any presents. I think he might be too big. Ooh. No, he's not. If he can go down a chimney, he can get down here. Ooh. Now, or you must face the dire consequences. He said that nigga was scary. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't know, man. You just seem a little pussy to me. If you ask, now he stopped. He probably was. No, it was a lot of shit that scared me when I was young. I ain't gonna lie. Whatever. Stuff. What are you going to do? I'm gonna do the best I can. Big Bob, bro. But yeah, there was a lot of shit that genuinely scared me when I was a kid, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Everybody, man. Right. And then right after I was watching these, bro, I hopped right onto the Paranormal Activity movies, and that was a bad decision, bro. But before she can even take a step into the shop, her best friend Sabrina tells her no. Thankfully, that's a good friend. But after they leave, we see why Carly Buff was so interested in those scary-looking masks. You see, Carly Buff is constantly being bullied in the form of people scaring her. These boys from school, her best friend, her little brother, all be scaring her because she's a big, big scaredy cat. And honestly... Relatable. Not anymore, but I used to be the most sensitive, easy to scare kid on the face of the I'm earth. And let me tell you, crying at every horror movie gets old. And it was starting to get old for Carly Beth, too. All right, I don't think I was that scary, though. I don't think I was crying at every horror movie I've seen, or I was just genuinely, like, crazy, crazy scared, bro. I wasn't scared of every little thing, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Niggas like Josh, I could, you could, I could, 
Hey. I could be I could be on some like, you feel me, trying to scare this nigga shit. Where this nigga would be like, uh, I'll be over his house or something. And he'll be in this one room, right? He'll be in this one room. It was a big ass room that had a bathroom in there. And you think nobody's in there. Nigga, I will be in the cut. He walk out the bathroom, nigga. I pop out that shit. Then nigga jump up like he just goddamn seen God, bro. The lie. next day at school was the last straw. Last During stuff. lunchtime, the two boys that scared her from the night before come over to her table to apologize, saying they were just joshing around, having some fun. But Carly Beth was not having it. She tells them, whatever, just go away. But when they go away and Carly Beth takes a bite of her sandwich, she notices this PB&J is a little more chewy than normal and tastes a little, a little like... Uh, what the fuck? They put a live worm in her sandwich. Man... That's not even oh, a hell no. gotta be some form of attempted murder. Cause what the actual this was the last straw for Carly Beth. She had been humiliated. Her self-esteem was destroyed. She was so mad, she destroyed her duck costume. It was getting serious. She wanted revenge. You know what I was kind of scared of too? Kind of just a little bit, not too much though. The Grinch. I don't know why, but I was scared of the Grinch a little bit too. It made no sense. Boy, she was so mad, she destroyed her duck costume. It was getting serious. She wanted revenge. She was tired of being the one who's constantly scared. She wanted to finally be the one doing some of the scaring. So she goes to the one place where she knows she could find something scary. The novelty shop. Carly Beth gets in and is met with this creepy old dude who, although is hesitant at first, lets Carly Beth shop around. My dog. Carly Beth browsing around and she's not really rocking with any of the masks. They're not scary enough. Conveniently though, she finds this back room that has exactly what she's there, looking bro. for. I walk in there and see a bald nigga just sitting there. When she and goes all to the grab it, off, the old dude comes out of nowhere Fuck, and no, tells her, Nuh uh, Fuck, these no, masks are not for sale. Cardi Beth persists and tries to give him a whopping 30 bucks. Hold on, 30 bucks? But the old man Fuck, still says, No, no damn come it. on, dude. 30 bucks? That's like a meal at Chick fil A. What are you doing? Old dude tells her she's not ready for the responsibility of the mask and it's super dangerous. And blah, 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 blah. That's more than But while like he's Chick explaining, like Cardi Beth like steals like the mask and runs out. She's a thug. And for some reason, the old dude doesn't chase her. He just yells and closes the door. I mean, all right, Cardi Beth finally got what she needed to get revenge on the bullets, but she was gonna regret that real soon. Cardi Beth gets home and immediately puts the mask to work, scaring her little brother. And that was only the beginning. She suits up for Halloween, taking with her this weird replica of herself that her mom made for her. The shit that they did to that girl, bro, that's how they start off all the goddamn, like, horror villain stories, bro. I swear all horror villain stories had that same thing. They always got humiliated in school. This dad and third happened or some shit happened to him, my nigga. And that's what made him Michael Myers. It's always the same story with all of these niggas. Uh, I don't know. He picks up Sabrina to, to go looking niggas. for the bully. She's hunting. And this is what we notice. The mask is making Cardi Beth act a little more peculiar. <laughs> Y'all like that word? Y'all like that word? She's more aggressive, scaring random kids, scaring random moms, and even scaring Sabrina. Sabrina confronts her about this, and Cardi Beth's only answer is, The mask made me do it. Okay, so if you grab me like that hey, again sir. and I'll punch you, just know my fist made me do it. Carly Beth eventually runs away for some reason and stumbles upon exactly who she wanted to find. The bullies. And a perfect setting too. She approaches them and they're immediately wetting their pants. Talking about how they was just goofing around and they only did those things to Carly Beth because they liked her. Man, fuck oh, those kids! Oh, how could we all be so stupid? The old worm in the sandwich, move, eh? <laughs> Real panty dropper, forgot about that one. Cardi Beth successfully scares them off after the replica head of herself versus to the boys, help me. And Cardi Beth afterwards buries the replica head and returns home. I'm sure at this point, some of y'all already know what's going on, but it gets even clearer when Cardi Beth gets home and is finally ready to take off the mask. But when she tries to, it hurts. Stuck. She can't seem to take it off for some reason, so she asks Sabrina to help her. When Sabrina goes to check, she sees there's no line between the mask and Carly Beth's skin. She even runs to the bathroom and sees the eyes in the mirror aren't her eyes anymore. That's exactly why you can't go into no goddamn antique shop with my nigga with a bald nigga working there with no lights, no nothing. Nothing's gonna, something's gonna happen, bro. Something's gonna happen. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, she has become one with the mask. This was insanely scary as a kid. Getting stuck as your Halloween mask? Heck nah. It's bad enough that it's this mask, because let's be real. If you were stuck looking like that, you are not pulling a single person. Like, just scratch having kids off the list, please. But I think if it was one of those that random funny masks, it'd be like even worse. Like, imagine just trying to trick or treat one year. Your mask gets stuck on you, and now... You're stuck as the 44th president of Barack Obama or something. Like, I ain't signed up for this. Carly Beth runs back to oh, the novelty shit. shop where the old dude is waiting for her. And he explains to her that that's her new face now. 
Hardy Beth understandably starts tweaking out, but the old man interrupts her and tells her that there might be one last chance to remove it with a symbol of love. Self love. What's he starts explaining to her how he was just like her. He didn't love himself. He blah, blah, blah. This ain't about you, bruh. But before Cardi has to know what a symbol like of self love damn. is, the other masks start floating off the shelf. <laughs> ah, ah, Why this does it may like look goofy. Bitch? But you gotta understand, as a kid, this stuff was scary, bruh. Floating heads chasing you? Come on, buddy. Be real. It's a little scary. The heads chase Cardi Beth all the way back to the know, cemetery where she buried her replica head. And they start backing off as soon as she raises it up. Accepting that the crybaby scaredy cat girl she tried to bury is her. And she should love her regardless. Cardi Beth is finally able to take off the mask. Woo! Yeah, all right, let's go. Yep, she goes home and hugs her mom who have been worried about her all night. And while they're talking about Cardi Beth's night, they turn around to see the little brother wearing the mask. Jeez. Boom, and then That's the episode movies. ends. Pretty scary, yeah. Huh? Pretty scary. I don't, I don't know why she didn't just burn the mask and throw it away. But that's the one deemed the scariest to the general public. That's still not the one that I found the scariest. But before I go over that one, I have to go over one that I found almost as scary as okay, the scary. Anything with dolls, bro. Before yeah, y'all got it, my nigga. I don't give a fuck. I'm not messing with him. I'm not rocking with him. I'm not doing anything like that with him, bro. You're not catch me in no contact. I'm not having none in my room, my nigga. I don't give a damn, my nigga. Don't. I don't even have teddy bears. I'm sorry, I can't rock with it, bro. The only thing I've ever had close to that, remotely close, was this Ray Charles ass shit in the other way back room, bro. This Ray Charles shit. I'm sorry. Nigga, no. I'm not. No, 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 no. No. Only thing I've, I've ever owned, bro, is this goddamn Scooby Doo fucking pajama set ass toy or some shit, my nigga. For a different reason. Unlike most Where's Goosebumps episodes, this one doesn't have a possessed mask or a werewolf or anything like that. So you're probably wondering, sorry, what makes this so scary? Shit, in this one, we follow a boy named I Michael whose life might be sorry. worse than Cardi Beth's. Like Cardi sorry. Beth, he's constantly being bullied, but instead of it being some boys or his best friend or his little brother, it's his little sister. <laughs> sorry. Nigga now, obviously, since she's sister. a sweet, innocent little sister, she can mess with him and so never hope. get in trouble. So Michael hope. was sick. He wanted some payback. So the day his dad he came home up. with one of those old big clocks and told his sister not to touch it, he saw an opportunity. He gets up in the middle of the night and makes his way towards the clock. And when he gets there, instead of doing, you know, some actual noticeable damage, he just slightly turns the head of the bird that comes out the clock, which is... Yeah, that, that'll show him. But when Michael wakes up the next day, things are different. Very different. It's his birthday. Mind you, his birthday had already passed. Like, it was a few days ago. So you know what that means. Two B days, a Michael had gone back in time. And oh, this fuck. is what I meant when I said this episode is scary for a different reason. Because every time Michael wakes up, he gets younger and younger. Going from a tween to a kid to a baby. That's scary. What the fuck? It's not like when he turns into a baby, he's back to having baby thoughts. No, he's just Michael with the mobility of a baby. I would hate that. That's Even sick, at my bro. lowest of lows in life. That's I never. sick, bro. That's sick. Imagine restarting your whole timeline of life, but just as a baby, though. Like, you still have the same thoughts. You still have the same everything. You still have the same vision. The way you look at now, bro, it's just simply just you as a baby, though, bro. That's wicked work like shit, bro. I ain't even gonna lie, bro. That's wicked work like shit. Oh, my gosh, bro. Nigga, you gonna have to eat that mashed ham and shit? Like, bro, hell no. Nah. Ever. No. To revert back to being no. a baby. I got too much left in the tank to stop. And it wouldn't have just stopped at being stuck as a baby. Sorry, Next bro. day, he would have been back in the womb. The day after that, back in the sack. And eventually, ceasing to exist. Which is essentially death. Back to a sperm Sort of. Too. Luckily for Michael, though, he realized the way to prevent that. himself from getting any younger was to turn back the bird's head that he messed up earlier. Effectively saving himself from having to go back in the sack. And essentially, death. Sort of. But like I said, although this episode is scary, it's still not the one I found the scariest when I was little. This title belongs to no other than the Night of the Living Dummy. See, I can't do that doll shit, And this one we follow a girl named about. Amy, and unlike the other two I can't protagonists... can't do that, that doll, victorious Rex shit, bro. I'm sorry. For her, Amy has I can't no... fuck with Annabelle. I can't fuck with the boy. I can't fuck with Rex. I can't fuck with anything like that along those lines. No, sorry. Bullies or anyone she wants to get revenge on. Nothing. Just an older and younger sibling making her the middle child. So no one likes her. And she's definitely the most I unique. I knew a nigga that had something too. like you this, see, bro. You see, Amy's into the very, one day. very random hobby Fuck. that is. No, nigga. That's when people use dolls to talk. I don't think I talked to that nigga like ever again after that day. And, and 
you could have learned how to juggle or something. And one day while showing off her skills, her doll Dennis falls apart. Ah, bummer. Guess you gotta find something else to do. But luckily for Amy, her dad got her a new doll. A dummy named Slappy. I might have Unlike Dennis, like, Slappy is no regular like doll. You see, after that. Amy perfectly reads some Latin text that comes with Slappy, it turns out he's alive. And this stupid, Fuck. ugly no, doll no. is the sole reason I couldn't watch this episode as a kid. For some backstory, I was already scared of dolls as a kid because of Chucky. So when I saw Chucky, another yeah, evil looking doll that likes to crack jokes and Chucky's he's ginger, kind of it brought back trauma. I'm not going to sit I here and act like Slappy was doing the same things Chucky was doing. He wasn't murking people or anything. But he was doing something that as a kid could be perceived worse than that. He was getting Amy in trouble with her parents, messing up family paintings, making fun of her family. He even attacked a family friend. And all these things may seem tame, like no big deal, right? But imagine if Amy had immigrant parents. Yeah. Oh, After clipped. Slappy he's doing clipped. all these things and then trying to mark Amy's <laughs> dad with the car, my fault, Slappy. I didn't know you had it in you. Amy decides to finally get rid of Slappy by throwing him down a drain. And he does this funny scream when it happens. Hey, kid, wait. <laughs> but that very same night, <laughs> Slappy returns, threatening her See, family. hell no. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. No, no. That's the thing I'm talking about, nigga. I ain't gonna lie. That's the thing I'm talking about. You're gonna have to boot that nigga with a baseball bat or something, bro. Make his head fly out. Take the stuffing out or something. Burn that shit. Burn that nigga or something, bro. And telling Amy she will be his slave forever. Yeah, you can try saying that to her, Slapster, but try saying that to me, and you're gonna end up trending on Twitter, buddy. At this point, Amy's sister finally sees that Slappy's actually alive, and they Hell also realize no. Slappy is a doll, a hollow doll that you could like push over and kick and stuff, which kind of makes my fear of this dude coming after me as a kid a, a bit irrational, but whatever. Slappy chases them around the house, eventually catching them off guard and tripping That's Amy. The thing. I'm and now he's about standing them. over her talking about how the family belongs to him now or whatever. Two things didn't make sense to me. One, Set why is the sister fight. just watching him stand over Amy? And two, why is Amy so hell bent on grabbing the broom to attack Slappy? You literally just shoved him upstairs. Kick the dude, bruh. Anyways, while Slappy is standing over Amy, I don't know where some Someone tackles Slappy, causing him to shatter his face on the fireplace, releasing the evil gas in his system. What the? Amy and her what sister are confused as the family comes downstairs, including her brother. Wait a minute. If the brother wasn't the one who tackled Slappy, then who did? We see on the table, Amy's old dummy Dennis is alive. And they gave him the voice of Goofy for some reason. Gorsh. It's good to be back in the family. <laughs> the Boom. Fuck? And then the episode ends. Slappy eventually returns again in Night of the Living Dummy 3 with freaking Anakin Skywalker. Then he returns again in Bride of the Living Dummy where Slappy gets a shorty. And eventually returns a third time in the movies. But that Slappy sucks. Sorry, not sorry. Hopefully you guys can see why I find this show so creepy as a kid. And if you don't, I don't blame you. I've never watched that show in my life. And I ain't gonna lie. The story? I've genuinely never watched hey, that show. Hey, 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 hey. Away, 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 see, they were. I told y'all, bro. Coraline, bro, really helped, bro. It really did something to niggas, bro. It really did something to niggas.